So, um, I'll briefly introduce uh, my co-organizer and uh, I would say my friend already and somebody that most of you know, but still I would like to properly introduce Andrew Laszlo, um, who will also moderate the next panel. Today, Zhuzha is currently in the last phase of her PhD in uh, the Atos Shulora University. Sorry? Is it the Atos Shulora yeah. University in Budapest? Yeah. Um, but she's been for such a long time a curator as well in the Transit Association, and later now in, in the Kemki, the Central European Institute for History in Budapest. Uh, she worked with the Artful Archives. She's been one of the co initiators of the uh, parallel chronologies and the exhibitions and the whole website structure and the series of exhibitions with Dora Hecht that basically also kicked off my interest for exhibitions history. When, as I already said it in Prague, several 13 years ago already. I so, yeah, would grown old already. Meanwhile, <laughs> um, and um, she co-edited also Creativity Exercises, uh, uh, the book that has been published by Steinberg Press. Thanks. Is it Steinberg Press? Yes. Uh, and um, Dora Maurer and Vicky Shirley, and uh, among others, and also co-edited the book with Emesh Curtis that I've already referenced on the temporality of archives, what will be already exists in Central Eastern Europe. And she co-organized also the Residences <laughs> project. Um, I'm really honored to be able to co-organize a conference with Julia and other projects. Julia, the floor is yours, and I'll leave you for the whole time. Thank you. Thanks a lot for the wondering introduction, and I'm, I'm very glad to be here with all of you in such a good company. And, um, now I would like to introduce this double panel that seeks answers to the question how critical theories and uh, the art and art history of our region uh, relate to each other. And I'm being a bit selfish because I brought some <laughs> kind of new research uh, or documents uh, that are not so directly related to this question, but let's see. <laughs> We can find connections because it's all about connections, um, as uh, we've been discussing so far. So, as an introduction, I would like to present. And <laughs> yeah, it's my first time that I, I'm doing this. So, uh, excuse my. <laughs> what I observe the fact that it's it's not very proficient in yeah, yeah, so I, I try to do my best to visualize something that um, I've been thinking about for a while, and this is my first approach to this dilemma of critical theories and Eastern Europe can come together. So, in the spirit of word system theory, this diagram um, shows the historical entanglement uh, of, of these fields. Uh, and then I also would like to show, uh, mm -hmm. present the case study. So, here, uh, you can see, and I, I cannot explain all the relations, just uh, some. Um, so, the question of gender and feminism, race and decoloniality, all emerged in parallel with an uh, intensified awareness of geopolitical hierarchies within the art world. And the question how East European art and its marginalized history of modernism and avant-garde can position itself within the globalized cultural sphere. From the late 60s on, one can often notice some rivalry between these fields and causes, rivalry for the attention and the support offered by the philanthropic Western organizations and art institutions, which of course also had a political and commercial agenda behind their exhibition and collection policies. The situation was complicated further by the fact uh, that uh, on the level of cultural diplomacy, the socialist countries of Eastern Europe ardently supported artists and exhibitions that showed commitment for the emancipation of women, racial equality, and anti-colonial struggles. On the other hand, the majority of marginalized neo artists and what was the historians in these socialist East European countries 
more and more wish to get support, not from the local, but from Western art institutions, critics and curators. So this is one level of the entanglement. Now I try to pack, unpack, unpack this generalized uh, entanglement using a microhistorical approach. I will present the unpublished documents of a regional initiation launched in the January of 1989 by the Hungarian art historian Laszlo Becker, who from the late 60s was one of the key catalysts of cross-border artistic and uh, historical collaborations and curatorial collaborations within and beyond Eastern Europe. Becker, together with his younger colleague, Gabor Pataki, who researched the uh, rather Hungarian avant-garde and post-war art, so they distributed a poll. Yes, um, distributed a poll to initiate a collaboration between East European artists and art historians, which aim to bring about a comprehensive exhibition, as well as conferences, publications realized in joint regional effort. As this quotation uh, from their call reveals that uh, they could highlight some dilemmas uh, of specific regional relevance that could potentially overlap with the aspiration of critical art history, but that's not that easy and clear. So nationalism, nation nationalism, ethnicity, folklore, are very thrown out, debated, unresolved issues, which sometimes strengthen, sometimes inhibit the workings of an East European consciousness, if such a thing exists at all. In art, all these factors sometimes have a progressive role, at other times a retrograde one, if these qualifiers make any sense at all. You can see that everything was questioned. Um, the ethnic minor minorities in that stage of emergency deserve solidarity because they are guarding a tradition. The Leibach and Irving group's provocative nationalism deserves attention because it goes against tradition. Trabirsky, Kandinsky, Brankusi, Vartu, Vojda managed to build on a national or folk tradition. Others turned this attempt into provincialism or kitsch. So I think this, this was one of the most important dilemmas uh, for which they wanted to get uh, some feedback. I intend to use this case study to test how the parallel emancipatory struggles of various marginalized spheres of art can be reconciled through the realization of common aims, namely the deconstruction of the monolithic art historical discourse that <laughs> treats the art of the core countries as universal history. To avoid creating a red herring, I have to admit that I did not find traces that would suggest that actually East European art historians invented critical art history. And it uh, kind of shows some connection, but what I'm presenting is not that this secret <laughs> for this. Uh, moreover, uh, I, I also have to admit that uh, uh, I, I originally uh, wanted to present this case study for the topic of uh, interconnectedness, and uh, finally we couldn't organize a panel on this, so it made me think that how these threads can be connected. And, uh, so, uh, here's the Beckers and Pataki's call, which was phrased in the form of a questionnaire to test the waters concerning the potential basis, the possible frameworks and definitions of such a cross-border collaboration. Um, so they asked about uh, uh, how to call this region, and there was an interesting debate between Becker and Pataki whether to use East European or Central European art, back advocated uh, East European, uh, since it's more inclusive. And Pataki, who is a bit younger, uh, argued for uh, what is in English Central Europe, but in Hungarian it sounds a bit better, and as well as in German, uh, yes, and since he considered it a distinct entity. Um, so, and, and then uh, they also asked uh, uh, colleagues about uh, political art and art and politics. Becker made reference to St. Yobi, who claimed that history is kitsch, <laughs> and um, also um, how to uh, uh, solve the uh, uh, prob problem of the region. And they refer to political science and also to artists like Weiss, uh, who. Uh, advocated a unified idea of, of uh, Europe. 
And I think what is really important uh, is nationalism, uh, ethnicity and folklore. Uh, if there's any kind of survey between uh, capitalism and, and uh, socialist uh, uh, um, traditions of, of uh, uh, art history writing, uh, and also they touched upon the linguistic problems and how visual art is a supranational medium of communication can function. And uh, postmodern regionalism was also on the table. Periodization was uh, also uh, raised, uh, and also how uh, uh, the art history of Eastern Europe is always kind of uh, uh, at the mercy of Western interest uh, for either dissident yes. movements or rural communism or politics, whatever, and, and uh, uh, how, how East European art historians and artists are always uh, get to know each other through Western mediation and East European specialists coming from Western countries. Uh, and, and the whole, whole uh, point of this was, was to um, to create uh, some kind of agreement or common denominator for a collaboration. It appeared to the authors that it was the best moment for such an initiative since the art from Eastern Europe was getting increased international recognition and they uh, intended not only to understand this process, but take a lead over it. They approached a dozen of colleagues uh, with the utopian intent that in the upper stream of democratic transformation, of the eastern part of Europe, Europe, a new regional coalition of art professionals can be formed. Uh, the plan was to publish the received responses uh, in English, Hungarian, and also in the mother tongue of the authors. I, I, I consider it quite progressive that they actually raised money to translate uh, mm -hmm. the questionnaire and all the responses to all the languages. So it could, could look nice now, even this <laughs> multi-language publication. Uh, but uh, yeah, here are the respondents uh, who actually sent their responses. Uh, yes, and uh, on the basis of Becker's notes, Vyaslav Borowski, Andrzej Turowski from Poland, Jesha Benegri from um, Yugoslavia, Magda Karnacci from Romania, and Tishi Walok were also as, but I couldn't find their answers, so probably they didn't send any. Um, so, um, the only Hungarian respondent was Giza Pernetsky, the art critic living in Cologne uh, since uh, seventy, where he started an artistic career pursuing conceptual art and main art activities, and he often acted as an East European expert himself. Uh, he did not agree with the, the whole uh, uh, proposal, claiming that this is rather an identity question than an artistic one, and his response is the only one that was published in a mainstream Hungarian newspaper, <laughs> which is, I find interesting. Zuzana mm -hmm. uh, Bartosova, creator of 20th century sculpture collection in the Slovak National Gallery, um, was uh, also close contact with the underground scene, uh, was uh, Another uh, person who responded, uh, and uh, she could quite well go along with uh, Becker's vision. She stated uh, that the fight for superiority should be changed to the plurality of possibilities, completing each other under a multi center dynamic scene. Reflecting on the potentials of postmodern regionalism, Bartoshaw added what was later widely professed. Uh, that marginal and minority art can provide exhaustive centers with new influences. The other re re response from Czechoslovakia came from Tomáš Tomáš, the art historian of an earlier generation who emigrated to West Germany in 1980, and in 1989 was the deputy director of the Wilhelm Landry Museum in Duisburg. Strauss was back as friends and kind of mentor from the late 60s. Though Strauss spoke Hungarian, and could also reply in Slovak, he decided to send his response in German, which he considered the lingua franca of Central Europe, the language he used with uh, all the colleagues from the region. Uh, Strauss referred back and Pataki to several articles uh, he already published and written on this subject. His main thesis was that artworks belong to more different contexts and narratives, and thus can be interpreted and historicized in more ways it should complement each other. We need both inner and outside perspectives. He also confirmed that Beck has what a 
Pataki's assumption that folk and minority art may have a specific progressive and transnational role in the region, but it is obscured by nationalist art histories that also mask the significance of regional mediation and collaboration in the history of avant-garde. He also expressed that his wish that the prejudice against East European context that was already dissolved by avant-garde, but which he could still sense, uh, especially in Prague, <laughs> this is what he wrote, should be abandoned so that a regional collaboration may be formed. Other res respondents who could go along uh, uh, and embrace um, Beckers and Pataki's vision uh, were uh, Paul Neagu and Sherban Gabriel, Bruce was originally from Romania, now living in London and Cologne, respectively. Neagu described Eastern European art in a poetic way as a transit zone in constant flux and oscillation, and exactly because of its complexity endangered by homogenizing groups. He pointed out that its peripheriality is highly relative, and he also objected to Joseph Boyce's idea of a unified Europe as simplistic and naive, as well as the pathetic dramatizations of uh, Irwin. I find it really interesting that we usually don't put Neagu and Irwin at the same table, mm -hmm. but actually they knew her. Mm -hmm. I mean, at least Neagu knew her, uh, because Becca mentioned him in the uh, uh, questionnaire. Nagu stressed the need to find Eastern forms and in this sense referred to his cultural hyphen series uh, and his investigations of visual hermeneutics. And actually this work was a kind of response, uh, I mean, not directly to the questioner, but he pointed to this work as, a, uh, as his take on, on this question. Sherban Gavria, who I didn't know before, I don't know. Uh, please uh, help uh, me to contextualize him later. Uh, but he was a textile artist centered, uh, and his response was centered around uh, the experience of an East European emigre artist in the West, filled with conflicted uh, nostalgia and alienation. Uh, he criticized the idea of inner progress on which modernism was built and proposed something very similar that was later introduced as a spatial turn of art history, giving a spatial dimension to asynchronous developments with a Benjamin understanding of historic time from which hidden layers can be unearthed and made contemporary. Uh, his response is really interesting, even if I couldn't really contextualize this uh, more. In contrast, Anna Rot Anda Rottenberg from uh, Warsaw, who in uh, 1908 was uh, also the co-creator of the Polish-German exhibition dialogue stage in Düsseldorf. So she related uh, to the questioner mostly through frustration <laughs> that she summarized that the countries contained within the communist international were excluded from the artistic international and the contemporary as such which is also a very prominent issue from, I mean, came, became to be a prominent issue, but yeah, so I could find some, you know, very progressive traces. Um, Rottenberg complained about how the East is homogenized and how Polish art only receives momentary attention uh, and only by political motivation. Her experiences of ICA conferences were very enlightening for me because she reflected on that. Uh, she told the history of 20th century Polish art through the specific dialectics between striving for autonomy and political engagement, as well as the multiple connections to Russian Germany and uh, Russian German and Austrian culture in the intersection of which the art of various Polish cities may be understood. Drawing parallels to the reception of Irish, Portuguese, Chinese and Nicaraguan art, she argued for abandoning the identification with the East and using less geographically tied term terminology to describe center periphery relations that existed elsewhere too. Uh, her exhibition, Unknown Europe, um, staged in Krakow in 91. Uh, uh, I think uh, was kind of testing uh, this approach in practice, but 
you know, again, I couldn't find enough information, but I don't have time to present it anyway. <laughs> so the other Polish respondent, Jaromir Jadlanski from Muzeum Suki Wuj, who was uh, of a younger generation, refused more radically the idea of East European Army. He wrote about the necessity to re reconstruct the dam damaged unity of European country in connection with, among others, his a voice Poland transport project. Mm -hmm. Sorry. This slide, um, which Jadlanski also assisted together with uh, Stanislavski, and which was presented in Budapest in the same year, 1989. From Yugoslavia, um, only one quite resigned reply was received by Sharimir Koscevic, who could only support pragmatic and strategic future-oriented cooperation, but without deriving it from any shared historical, ideological, or theoretical grounds. Koscevic, previously director of the Student Cultural Center inside of the Hotbed of New Artists, New Art Practices, was in close friendly contact with Becker from the 70s. In 89, when he was the chief creator of the City Gallery of Zagreb, he wrote, I quote, what is it that links us? The history of photography since 18, uh, 1839, the railway system, the spirit of Habsburg, which one? <laughs> that from pa Prague or that from Vienna? Last front, communist, and building of socialism, Christianity. Which one? From that, uh, that from Rome or that from the Constantinople? Shortly, I think that expect, expect from some misty images connected with European culture in general, in contrast to Patagonian American or Zen Buddhist cultures, nothing indeed does bind us as a whole. If we want to work together, some nostalgic feeling of the past should not be the motif. Further, future is much more stimulative acts now. Uh, yes, sorry. Um, uh, which uh, uh, could still allow uh, for what the question has saved it, and sorry, I just read this. Uh, we are convinced, uh, so it speaks from the questioner, I put for the questioner, we are convinced that the de deterioration of international relations is always a consequence of politics and power relations, and it is precisely art that has the ability to counter these tendencies. Uh, so Kostiewicz was most probably daunted by the transk economic situation and the starting collapse of the multi-ethnic coalition of his country. However, uh, two other respondents from Bulgaria also gave some proof of the limited validity of Bakas and Tlapaki's vision of a shared uh, and resumable regional uh, tradition. Wow. Not sure. <laughs> Sorry? I said, don't change the slide. Oh, okay. Yeah, I will talk about Diana Popova, who you can see. So she's an art critic from uh, Sofia, uh, who was one of the first to write about the progress in art in the area of the native. And she stated that culture in the Balkan and concerning African experience socialism is much more than the context for contemporary Bulgarian art and art historians than Eastern Europe. Instead of a shared East European tradition or sensibilities, Popova, Popova could only pinpoint psychological connections to the art of other countries of the region, in addition to the political frameworks, uh, discerning manifestations of a dialectic between adaption and resistance, inferiority and provinciality conflict. On the other hand, she also reported that Bulgaria in Bulgaria, there were no progressive avant-garde traditions which might provide common historical references. Their actionism and abstraction appear together with postmodern trends, thus collaboration can only be conceived on the basis of present and future connections. The other respondent from Bulgaria, may I change? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Dimitar uh, Grosdanov, a creator, artist, and critic, prominent member of the emerging performance scene, would mostly echo Tokova's stance, showing willingness to start a cooperation, but reservations for deriving it from a shared consciousness of history. Neither the planned plan publication of uh, this text nor the envisioned regional traveling exhibition was realized by Becker or Pataki, but in the coming years, several similar para parallel and endeavors started partly with the involvement of the same network. Now I can only mention Europa Europa, 
which was staged in, mm -hmm. in uh, 94. It was a very large, large scale exhibition created by Richard Stanislav de Kombuch and Christoph uh, Brockhaus. But Becker also acted as an advisor, as well as some of uh, other art historians of regional relevance who mostly contributed to the West Povilon catalog, including Igor Sabe, Maria Shushovsky, Shalimir Koscevic, Kristina Pashut, Andrzej Turovsky, Jeremy Jadlanski, Miroslav Lavac, Thomas Strauss, Boris Groes, Pierre Astani, Lauren Peggy, and so on. I just find it interesting because we usually link these people to different uh, periods, and uh, but they were all together. Moreover, uh, Stanislav Foliba was responsible for the exhibition architecture, and in the honorary committee, George Soros sat together with Hans Georg Adamer. <laughs> <laughs> nice constellation. So, Becky and many other contributors were not at all happy with how the exhibition was finally realized, but it still gave rise to very interesting debates. For instance, there was one between Thomas Strauss and Boris Broys, which I find very, very interesting, and I hope that Andrea <laughs> talk about it, but no, uh, she, she has already written about it, so you can find. Many missed uh, considerations for the many people who criticized the exhibition is consideration for the complex socio-political context of the artworks, and uh, that the whole show rather aimed to make East European art fade smoothly into the Western canon. But of course, no one really cared that only 10% of the participants were women. Uh, actually, some of uh, yeah, some images. Uh, yeah, so it's it's it was all uh, together with with uh, how uh, like Strauss uh, and Royce discussed the uh, Western reception of Ilya Kabakov and how it all defined what people started to think about this you know, and that's why we have sense of this all again about the shoot. But um, actually, some very important women artists uh, were quite prominently presented. For instance, Anna Lupash who for Becker represented a kind of essence of East European. Uh, a new version of her humid installation, for general created collaboratively with the inhabitants of a village in Transylvania in 1970, was uh, presented in Bonn. I, I couldn't find any image, so it's from 2008, but actually it, it said that it looked similar. But no one wrote about it in the uh, exhibition reviews. Mm. But, um, so, I think it's really uh, interviewing that how her original performative piece, piece created uh, a fascinating interplay between uh, experimental art, rural everyday female activities, and socialist peace movement was now transformed to open a dialogue with uh, the discourse of Western feminist art. And here, borrowing the term intersectionality, which was introduced by Black feminism exactly at the beginning of the 90s, I was to propose that we should develop an intersectional approach to the, in relation to critical theories and East European art history. In social sciences, uh, you must know, but I tell, intersectionality revealed that mechanism of discrimination and marginalization regarding uh, social position, gender, race, ethnicity, geopolitical, and I could add many other all are all interconnected, and it proposed that instead of competing for attention, they should join forces and fight for changes that benefit wider inclusivity. So in a similar vein, and also inspired by Lars von Becker's never really realized proposal, I think what is to be done is that instead of antagonizing, we should look for intersections between national art histories so that hybrid zones of context can be can penetrate our art historical analysis between globally relevant critical theory, theories and actual local historical complexities of the nationalism, Marxist legacies, and individual maneuvers, and between different temporal, local, and discursive contexts of East European artistic and curatorial practices. As you can see in the case of Anna Lupas, um, who was featured in, the, in mm -hmm. many, many international biennials and exhibitions, but also in the Hungarian language, uh, Cruz magazine, Working Woman. 
and and also the humid installation was reproduced. So it's it's uh, because in the one image you see kind of more traditional stuff, but but actually her most progressive pieces were <laughs> actually presented as you know uh, glorifying the working woman. And uh, and here it's also connected to the peace movement. So it's interesting that what, what they wrote about this piece actually. So uh, I wish I could read yeah. interpretations that could account for both and mm -hmm. even more uh, uh, aspects of, of one artistic practice in such an interconnected way. And I hope I wasn't too long. And now I jump to introducing uh, um, 